Hey guys, and welcome to another episode. Today in this video, I'm gonna show you how to go ahead and install a wheel stud kit on your car. Now, if you have a German vehicle, or if your vehicle runs lug bolts, as opposed to a set of wheel studs and lug nuts, you're gonna be in the exact same kind of situation as me. So if you take your wheel on and off your car a lot, you're gonna know that these are a little bit of a pain in the ass, especially if you go and decide to track your vehicle. So what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna show you how to install a new stud and the appropriate lug nut on your car that used to run these. This is my Mini Cooper John Cooper Works' front brake setup. Now, if you'll note right here, there's no studs going through the hub and protruding past the brakes. So for this kind of application, the stock kind of setup that you hold the wheel onto the car is with these, so they thread in and they hold the wheel onto here like that. Now, if your car runs wheel lug nuts and studs that come from the hub, it's gonna be something like this and you're gonna have a lug nut that's gonna attach to it and thread on. Now that's kind of what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna to be converting this kind of setup to a setup that runs studs with lug nuts. Now, why am I doing this kind of thing? Well, it's a lot easier to put wheels on and off the car once you have this kind of stud set up on your car. On the other hand, if you wanna to decide to say down the road, run spacers. Say if I need to run this kind of spacer. If I use my regular lug bolt like this, I'm gonna to need to get a bigger one if I wanna run a larger spacer. So if I want a five mil spacer, I'm gonna need at least a five millimeter longer stud. The same thing goes for a 10 mil. If I use a 10 mil spacer, I'll need a 10 millimeter longer stud. If I have a very long stud already installed on the car, I can use pretty much any kind of wheel spacer I want, anywhere from a five to even a 35 millimeter spacer. Now that's what I'm gonna be doing today. So I'm gonna be taking this off and I'm gonna show you how to install this on your car. Now before we get into it, I'm gonna first show you what you're gonna to need today for the installation. So on the left right here, you're gonna see that we're gonna need the wheel studs, you're gonna need the appropriate lug nuts for those studs. If you wanna use a spacer, you can get that, install it today while we're doing this. You're gonna need some brake clean, you're gonna need an open-ended wrench, especially if you can, you can find a flex head, that'll be very easy. If you can go ahead and find yourself a ratcheting wrench, that'll make your life a lot easier. I'm gonna be using a flare nut wrench. Both of these are the exact same size. They're both 17 millimeters. You're gonna need thread locker, and then you're gonna need a torque wrench. So first things first, your wheel needs to be removed from the car before we go ahead and actually install the studs on here. Once you have it off, we're gonna to need to clean up the threads that are found inside of the braking mechanism. So behind the brake, we're gonna have our hub, and that's where these threads are gonna thread into. So get a can of brake clean and just spray inside every one of those little holes. You wanna remove any dirt, any gunk, and especially any kind of anti-seize that would be in there. Now there shouldn't be any kind of anti-seize inside these holes, but if there is, the brake clean will remove it all. Now with brake clean, the nice thing is that it evaporates very quickly. Now if you do have like a little kind of puddle of brake clean, if you just blow on it, it'll evaporate like that. With the threads on the hub now cleaned up and ready for each one of our studs to be installed, we first need to apply a little bit of thread locker on the threads so that once we install it in here, it's not gonna wanna come out. So there are two kinds of thread lockers that you guys can install. There's medium strength on the bottom, which is blue, and then we'll be able to remove that down the road if we want to, if we use that kind. On the top, you can see that it says permanent strength. That's the kind that we're gonna need today because once we install these studs on the car, the last thing that we would want is for these studs to come out when we're driving. So we wanna get the permanent one, and if you guys wanna pick some of this stuff up, you guys can check the description box. This is what we're gonna need to apply on the threads. So if this here is our stud, this is the amount of thread that we're gonna have for our wheel and our lug nut to be installed onto. This little part down here on the other end is what's gonna be installed onto the hub. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my thread locker and put two little drops on here, like that. You don't need too much. And I'm just gonna go ahead and thread this in to the hub. Now I'm gonna first do it by hand until it doesn't really wanna move anymore. And then at this point, we need to tighten this up to about 30 to 40 foot pounds of torque to inside the hub. So the way that I'm gonna get it done is I'm gonna first grab one of my lug nuts that I have and I'm gonna put it so that the cone is facing outwards. I'm gonna be basically threading it on backwards. 
You're gonna thread that on so it's basically on there, not all the way, but pretty far on there so you can thread on another lug nut in a second. So you can see that we've got some meat that's protruding past it. What we're gonna do next is install a little tiny washer after this, and you're gonna be basically doing a setup like this. So you can see that we've got the stud, we've got one lug nut, we've got a couple spacers, and then another one. And both of the cones are facing this washer. Now the reason why we're doing this is we wanna tighten this up together, both lug nuts, and then we wanna be able to tighten up and put torque on here using our torque wrench and tighten it into the hub properly. So I'm just gonna put two little washers on top of the threads just so that when we're putting pressure on the studs, um, we're not gonna be putting any pressure on each one of the, the lug nuts. We're not gonna be like basically crushing them and deforming them. So you wanna have a little bit of pressure on here. And then you wanna tighten this up so it's not really gonna move. So you're gonna put the open-ended wrench on the back lug nut and the flare nut wrench on the front one. And you're gonna tighten them together. Once you have them pretty tight, you're gonna grab your torque wrench, put it on here, and you're gonna tighten this up to about 40 foot-pounds of torque. So I have someone inside the car putting braking pressure on the caliper so the rotor won't spin. I'm gonna tighten this down, and once you hear the click, okay, press. Once you hear the click, you know it'll be tightened up. And as soon as you hear the click, you can take this off, back off the pressure that's on this lug nut and the one on the back, and then this stud is gonna be installed. You're gonna repeat this procedure to every one of the stud holes that you have on here for your hub, and then repeat that procedure for every single one of your corners. So here we have one done, three to go. Now if you'll take note, on the end of this stud, there's an open end for a hex bit. If you have a hex bit that can attach to a torque wrench, you can use that and torque this up without putting each one of those nuts on here. With that, you can torque it up. You're still gonna to need to get someone to press the brake pedal to keep the rotor from spinning, but it's gonna be installed at that point. So once you have all four of them in, if you wanna rock a wheel spacer, you just slide it over top. Once we have that on there, we can grab our wheel, mount it up over top of each one of these studs, and then we're gonna be using regular lug nuts as opposed to the bolts that we were using before. So these just thread on like a regular bolt and like a regular nut. It's on there, it's done, you're gonna to torque these up, and then that's it. Now the reason why you're not really putting so much torque on these studs is because that torque is only holding the stud into the hub. We also have Loctite on the back of it, and then once you go ahead and put torque on the lug nut with the wheel on, you're not really putting torsional torque on the bolt, you're gonna be putting pressure against it like this. So we're gonna be putting pressure, and the bolt is gonna be essentially being stretched this way. So we can put more torque, hence why the torque spec for this is about 110 foot-pounds of torque, whereas the torque that we're only putting on the back part of the stud is between 30 and 40. You can then mount this up just like a regular wheel. Like that. And then grab your lug nuts and then put them on here. So this right here is with the wheel mounted on the car and the lug nuts tightened up. Now you can see how much extra meat there is on the threads. So if we wanna run a large spacer down the road, even bigger than an eight mil that I have mounted now, we can safely do that and it's not gonna be an issue. Taking the wheels off is gonna be easier, putting them back on is gonna be easier, and there's gonna be less hassle with this kind of setup. The installation for the front is slightly different than the rear. The rear is gonna be easier only because we're not gonna to need to get someone to press the brake pedal so that the wheels don't turn. If we pull up on the handbrake mechanism, it should tighten up and give us enough pressure on the wheel to keep it from spinning when we apply torque on each one of those bolts. As per the instructions for the red thread locker, it says that this stuff is basically good to go in 20 minutes and fully cures in 24 hours. So I would wait at least half an hour before you go ahead and mount the wheels up on the car and torque them up, in 24 hours, they should be fully cured. So that doesn't mean that you can't go ahead and drive the car. All that it means is it's gonna be fully dried in 24 hours. So I waited half an hour before mounting the wheels back up and torquing them. Now in 24 hours from now, they're gonna be fully good to go. Now the nice thing about picking up this kit is that if you have a four bolt car, so each one of your wheels only requires four bolts for you to mount the wheel in the car, 
Because this kit is only available in a lot of 20, so you buy 20 lugs and 20 studs, you're gonna have four extras, so save if something were to ever break down the road, you can replace it and you're already equipped with all that good stuff. If you guys wanna buy any of the stuff that I use today, whether it be the stud kit or the Permatex thread locker, you guys can check the description box down below. I'll have links for all that. Anyways guys, I'm just finishing up my school right now. I have my last exam tomorrow night, and after that, I'm basically home free. So after this, it's just video time. It's time for me to make a ton of videos for this, for this, and maybe some other cars. I don't know. But yeah, school's almost done, but video time is basically right there around the corner. Anyways guys, if you have any questions regarding the video, throw them down in the comment section below, and I'd be more than happy to help. Again guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.